What's up guys, how are you guys doing today? My name is BJ Mighty and in this video, I'm going to be talking about something that a lot of people have been requesting. Now, let's be honest, jewelry business is one of the most saturated and competitive business on this internet street. And I don't say that to scare you. In fact, I hope it doesn't scare you. I don't want you to be scared about that statement because of why there is a lot of opportunity in this business. But it explains why having a niche is one of the smartest way to stand out in a highly competitive and saturated industry like jewelry. My name is BJ. I'm a business coach specifically for jewelry and fashion business owners. And by the end of this video, you are going to walk away with three ways that you can pick a niche for yourself in the jewelry business. Three simple and easy way that you can choose a niche for your jewelry business. Now, maybe you found this video because you want to start a jewelry business or maybe you've already started your jewelry business and you feel like you don't have your niche well and you want to pick a niche. You want to switch or change your niche. Well, this video is for you. Or maybe you are just not satisfied with your niche or you don't think you have a niche and you want to pick a niche. Well, this video is for you. Now, without wasting your time, let's jump right into it. First way to pick a niche and the best way that I recommend that you pick a niche is by picking a niche that you are passionate about. Now, when a lot of people want to find out what kind of jewelry they will sell or what kind of niche they will go into, the first thing they do is to go and be checking out other people's pages on Instagram, trying to find something that they like. This is the wrong way to go about it. The first way to try to differentiate yourself or find a niche for yourself in, in any business or in jewelry is look inward at yourself. Look inward at yourself. Ask yourself questions about how you personally feel about that thing. Which one are you attracted to? What type of jewelry do you personally love? Do you see and you are always excited about? Now, this is a story of how I found the niche for my brand Mandilax. I like to use Mandilax as a case study in my videos. When I started Mandilax, or I mean before I went into jewelry business, I was in a music industry. That's why if you check out some of my old videos on this channel, there are videos for my music era. The point I'm trying to make is that because I was into music already, I was already in love with Iced Out Jewelry. You know, I was into the hip-hop scene and all that. So I already loved Iced Out Jewelry, hip-hop jewelry, diamond, gold, and all those kind of things. So when I wanted to start my jewelry business, I was highly influenced by the hip-hop culture, by the hip-hop lifestyle. That's why when I started my jewelry business, my niche was the type of jewelry that I personally wear, that I personally rock, and which was hip-hop inspired jewelry. And that's how I gave birth to the niche that we have for Mandelax today. So when finding your niche, the questions you are going to be asking yourself is, what type of jewelry am I personally attracted to? You are also going to ask yourself, what kind of jewelry do you want to be known for? Ask yourself these two questions. The answer you are going to settle for will be based on your fashion taste. It will be based on your sense of fashion. That's the first way to choose a niche. Now, after looking at your passion, you don't, you are not passionate about any kind of jewelry per se, or maybe you don't even like jewelry in real life because I've worked with clients who don't themselves love jewelry in real life, but they like to sell it to other people, to see jewelry on other people. So maybe you are not passionate about any kind of jewelry, but you still want to go into jewelry. The second way to pick a niche is to ask yourself, what kind of jewelry are you knowledgeable about? Maybe you've been opportune to work in a store where they sell jewelry or something like that. You could pick inspiration from there. Why you were working with them? What kind of jewelry were you attracted to? Or did you like to work with? Or did you find easy? If you just happen to have such an opportunity, think about that. Another way in terms of knowledge is that you might be opportune to have attended one of those workshops where they teach you how to hand make jewelry, maybe bead making or some type of hand make jewelry or those kind of stuff. This is another way to pick a niche because it means that you already have knowledge and making your jewelry. Or maybe you just know someone or you have access to someone who can teach you how to be a goldsmith how to be a silver smith, how to hand make jewelry in any type of form. Explore that avenue as well. Maybe that is something you are going to find yourself loving. Maybe you will enjoy doing it and then maybe you can make a career out of it. Use your knowledge. Just look into what kind of knowledge do you have personally. Maybe you are even a creative person. Maybe you know how to paint. How can you take your knowledge or your skill. How can you bring it into jewelry? Just see how you can bring out your creativity. That's another way to find a jewelry niche. Now, the third way that you can pick a niche for yourself is by following the trend. 
This is called the trend niche. This basically means selling the hottest jewelry in the market or the best selling jewelry in the market, the most popular, the most demanded jewelry in the market. Basically, you have to find an audience that you want to serve. And then you want to look for jewelries that are trending amongst that audience, among that demography. That is what you will be selling. This means that you have to keep up with the trend. You have to know what kind of jewelry is in trend, what kind of jewelry people are demanding for, people are you know asking for, and then you will be feeding them those type of jewelry. So this is the third way to pick a niche. And it's also a very easy way because all you have to do is just rely on statistics, rely on the numbers follow the numbers go where the numbers go go where the crowd goes these are just three simple ways that you can pick a niche in my program insta Dweller, i teach you nine ways that you can pick a niche in fact it's more than nine now because i've even narrowed it down to be more than nine but you are guaranteed of nine ways to pick a niche i've only shared three with you here think about the other nine i haven't shared so guys, if you love this video, if you've learned one thing or the other, or you are one of those people who found this video because you want to start your jewelry business and you don't know how to go about it, or maybe you already have a jewelry business, but somebody told you that your niche is bad or that you don't have a niche and you want to find a niche for yourself, or maybe you've made mistakes in your jewelry business and you want to correct it. And one of the ways of correcting this is by picking a new niche or changing your niche. Well, you've come to the right place because one of the things that I help people to do in my coaching program is I help them to nail their niche. I help them to find a highly profitable and easy to dominate niche. In my program, Insta Jeweler, I have a step-by-step -step process that I take you through for you to find a niche. I have a formula, a beauty formula around how you can nail a niche and nail it and hone it perfectly. So guys, if that's something that you are interested in doing, Click the link below this video and click on the link that says let's work together or something like that and get more information about how we can work together. But guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please like it, like this video, subscribe to my channel. And if you're starting your jewelry business afresh and you haven't gotten my free ebook, check in the caption of this video as well. The link to my free ebook will be waiting for you there. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for hanging out with me this, in this video. I'll see you in the next content. Peace out, y'all.